Next up, we have Glencore Extrata, which is a global metal producer and commodity supplier with big coal and copper assets. It is run by ex-South African Ivan Glassenberg. It has a market cap of a 320 billion rand, a PE ratio of 18.17 and a dividend yield of 7.5%. Now, Glencore have been absolutely smashed in recent That's weeks. Right. You know, everyone thought that they would be probably the most defensive out of the lot because mm. they've got a big trading business. You know, they've got direct exposure to the clients and, mm. you know, regardless of the prices, they still take a bit of margin by buying and selling to the clients. That hasn't seemed to be the case. Uh, mm. We've seen a big cost-cutting um, strategy implemented by Ivan Glassenberg. They've done a, a, a book bill to raise more money, mm. and the market hasn't liked it. Hasn't liked it at all. Um, and I think, you, you know, you've seen Ivan Glassenberg come out very, um, I, I would say, defensive of his company's position and almost questioning the shareholders and the investors why they've been so negative on the commodity cycle. Um, he, he is saying that, that a lot of the shareholders and investors are pricing commodities for a real doomsday scenario. And, and his, his argument is that that's unlikely to happen because if commodity prices move lower from here, you're going to see a lot of supply being taken out of the system as marginal producers go cash negative, um, go offline. And, and the guys who are around will, will then be able to benefit from that. Mm, let's have a look at the graph there and we can see... Um, I think that graph is certainly incorrect, incorrect because uh, yeah. they've had a big fall in recent times. So we'll get a, a different graph there. But uh, you feel like it's almost a, a double-edged sword for them because mm. knowing their style, you'd know that Ivan Glassenberg would be pretty excited with these lower prices sure. and be wanting to make some kind of big acquisition. Mm. But because their own share prices followed suit and you know, they're under huge capital constraints, um, you know, the ratings agencies are obviously very important mm. uh, to their business. Um, they're not in a position to make any acquisitions at these lower prices. It, it's unfortunate. That's exactly right. When, when you need the money to, to, you know, to really come to the party and make these, um, it's usually when you don't have it. Let's look at what they have done right. I mean, they, they did a share buyback recently, which was positive for shareholders. They divested in Lonman in June which was a, a master stroke because the share is down 85%. Well, they could have divested a lot longer before <laughs> that. But. They've still retained some value, and you could argue that the, the slide in Lonman was due to that. Um, mm. But I do, I do think that, that they're doing the right things. They're consolidating. They're looking after their balance sheet. They're cutting costs. Um, and, and they've just gone into defense mode at the moment. And I think that's what you need to be looking at in a company who will weather the storm because that's what it is, yeah. And in terms of their portfolio, not much exposure to iron ore there, but big expo exposure to copper. Yeah. And you would think in terms of the infrastructure boom we've seen in China, mm. copper would be more defensive in terms of, you know, um, uh, an economy starting to mature. Yeah. You know, lots of uh, electricity consumption, more urbanization and, you know, higher GDP per capita. Mm. Do you think that's a good position for them to be so heavily exposed to, to copper? Yeah, it depends. You're exactly right. Glencore is largely a copper play. Um, it's, it's quite a geared play, a lot of, lot of debt in, in the system on that. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, a tough commodity to be in at the moment. I'm not that positive on it. Uh, we haven't seen the signs of things improving yet. So until, until we do see that, um, I think you've got to err on the side of caution as well. So we managed to get the graph up and you can see it's a very different story Much to the better. other one they showed. Well, not better. <laughs> that, that's, that's a more realistic depiction, yeah. So, so, I mean, there are a lot of value investors out there and it's a big debate at the moment mm. uh, amongst uh, people in our world. Is that offering value? I, I do think there's value. The, you know, the, the question you've got to ask yourself is, is when do you get in? And, you know, at the moment, the, the, the risk of be taking exposure in companies like this is, is probably too much for most investors. Um, if we do start to see Chinese growth bottom out and, and stabilize, um, and we do see other signs of commodity prices starting to find a floor, that, that might be a, a time to, um, to indicate a buy. So hot or not? Not hot for me. Not hot. I agree. Um, I think Ivan Glassenberg is a great operator. Mm. Uh, shame his net wealth is halved to, I think, only $4 billion. Sure. Dollars, so tough, tough out there for Casualties him. Casualties of the, of the <laughs> slump, yeah. But let's see what he can do. But yeah. I'd watch from the sidelines.